In the ever-evolving landscape of technology, generative AI has emerged as a big game changer. Over the past two years, it has transitioned from a niche concept to a mainstream force, captivating businesses and individuals alike. It had democratized technology, making it accessible to anyone without formal training. This accessibility has led it to become the ultimate work tool, helping us to create designs, websites, and even these video scripts. But what's next on the horizon? Moving forward, major players such as OEMs, processor manufacturers, and OS providers are gearing up to deliver AI power PCs. These machines won't just be ordinary laptops. They will be equipped with specialized hardware, such as neural processing units, designed specifically for AI workloads. Here's everything you need to know about AI PCs. everyone. So there's been so much hype at the moment around AI and how this functionality is going to be integrated into PCs. Using AI technology, I have invited Brandon, a European VP for PCs, to join me and help us demystify AI and what it means for us and for our partners. Hi, Brandon. Hi, Debbie. I'm hoping you can help us break down the concept of AI in really simple terms. What exactly is an AI PC and why is everyone talking about it? Yeah, great question. Uh, and I think before we, we, we look at answering that one, let's just go back to what is Gen AI and why is it important when it comes to PCs of the future? If we look at Gen AI, it's becoming embedded across uh, many types of work, automation, data optimization, content creation, code generation. It's really about automating the routine and mastering the complex. And I think that concept then ports over to why do you need an AI PC? You know, let, let's see first, what exactly is an AI PC? If we think traditional PCs, they have a CPU, a GPU, a graphics processing unit, they have memory, they have storage, and nine times out of 10, we use a device or devices to interact with it, mouse, keyboard, et cetera. You know, and that won't change on AI-enabled PCs in the future. However, the secret source of what makes and a PC AI enabled is the addition of what we call a neural processing unit or an MPU. And this is really um, the game changer on how a personal computer will do AI computations on the device, what we call on the edge, um, you know, off the cloud, now at the user in front of them. And this MPU is going to be crucial for that to happen. Um, I've heard the te terminology TOPS. Can you help me to better understand it and what it what it does? Yeah, you know, that's that's very good. And for those who have never heard of TOPS before, uh, it stands for trillions of operations per second. And this is really a metric used to quantify the computational performance of a computer system. And in particular, in terms of its ability to perform mathematical operations. Um, TOPS is commonly associated with specialist hardware accelerators. For example, as I mentioned, they're neural processing units, but it also measures the, the speed of uh, graphical processing units or GPUs. And when it comes to AI PCs, when you evaluate the AI PC or chip design for deep learning tasks, you will really start measuring that in TOPS. So the higher the TOPS value indicates the better performance for AI-related computations. Um, and, you know, if you think about it, you will see machines that talk about having a top speed of 30 tops, 40 tops, 45. And Microsoft is recommending, uh, you know, a tops of 40 and above for AI enabled computing. A lot in that. So you talk about MPUs. Who makes them? Yeah, so MPUs uh, will be brought out by um, the uh, typical processor manufacturers, Intel. Intel just released their, their latest range of core ultra uh, um, uh, uh, processors that contain MPUs. You have AMD who's released uh, um, Ryzen, the, the, the 7040 and 8040 series. They also contain MPUs. And you'll have new players entering the market um, for the likes, of, the likes of Qualcomm, who will be bringing their Snapdragon Elite X, uh, which will run on ARM architecture. 
um, but will also contain an MPU and, and is AI enabled. And then, of course, we have Apple, um, and they also have the M1, M2, and M3 processors that have just been launched that also support uh, neural processing units. So you can expect that all of the traditional processor manufacturers will be including neural processing units on their devices um, you know, this year and bringing out more, more models out into the years ahead. Sounds great. And what about the PC OEMs? Are they all going to have AI-enabled PCs? Yes, absolutely. I think we've seen some early machines coming out already, but you can expect that every vendor will bring out AI-enabled PCs running either the AMD, Qualcomm, uh, Intel, and obviously Apple will be running its own chips. Um, but we expect to see probably a, a ramp up of new models coming out um, uh, from June onwards. And into next year, you could expect that almost all new machines coming out introduced into the market will have a, a flavor of AI enabled uh, uh, models. And I guess from what you're saying, this isn't only going to work on Microsoft. No, absolutely. I think, you know, it, to me, think of it always in the, the layers that make up uh, the, the computing ecosystem. We will have the OEMs with, the, with with their units in there. There will be components. So we'll have the likes of Intel, AMD, Qualcomm, et cetera. Um, and then on top of that, you will have the operating system. So you will have Google, traditional Microsoft. You know, all of those operating systems will support, um, uh, you know, AI-enabled PCs. But more importantly, it's what you layer on top of the operating system. So whether it's Mac, whether it's Windows, it's actually the apps on top of that. You'll harness the true benefits of, of AI computing. And I guess apps is the key piece. So where do the software fit into the AI ecosystem? Yeah, so as I said, you know, we'll be used to our usual operating systems, and then we'll have the application sitting on top. And I think that the, the best example that we recognize today would be Microsoft Copilot. You know, this is your AI assistant sitting on top of the Windows architecture that is bringing you the AI computational power it, using the um, you know new processor uh, capabilities with MPUs, and then you'll really have the use cases for those apps. So again, Microsoft Copilot, one we recognize, but you will also see things coming out from Zoom, from Adobe. So a lot of software manufacturers will be bringing out AI features on their software in the future that will benefit from having this this new functionality of neural processing units on the hardware. Thanks for that. So what benefits uh, can our users expect from these AI enabled PCs? Yeah, great question. I think we need to get comfortable understanding these benefits internally so that we can articulate them out to our reseller. So I think the first one is around productivity. You know, an AI PC is definitely going to help automate repetitive tasks, help with data analysis, and provide context-aware recommendations. So it really is about freeing up your time, streamlining some of the day-to-day -day, uh, um, constant activities that users do. Second one is it delivers a smart assistant onto your desktop. Um, you know, if we take, for example, virtual assistants, an example of which is Copilot, um, it can suggest code, it can provide relevant information, and it can even generate content for you. Um, and if you think a simple thing like a meeting, it can take notes, it can summarize the notes, it can put them into actions, and it can actually send those actions out to the relevant owners or leave them as actions for you to complete on your PC. I think the next one is it's going to allow us to become far more creative than we're used to being. No longer will you have to be a specialist in something, for example, a graphics designer, a DJ. You know, what this is going to enable you to do is actually bring out that creativity simply by asking AI to do that creative thinking for you. It will help you just put in some details and create you a logo. It will be able to create you a script in case you want to do a speech. So, you know, this, this creativity and personalization is a big concept and benefit for people. I think a simple one that we all get is as you put these neural processing units in there, the, the processing, processing speed of data will, will, you know, grow exponentially. Things will become much faster to analyze. The outcome will become far clearer. Running simulations and machine learning will be done at the snap of a finger when it comes to um, you know, AI PCs. In addition to that, we also have enhanced security. Security is a big, big risk today when it comes to edge computing. And what AI will do is help with detection, prevention. It will also use machine learning and algorithms to look at patterns and anomalies um, you know, to do early threat uh, detection. Then there's this uh, natural language processing benefit that, that, that AI PCs will bring. 
it understands and can compute natural language. It can translate text. It can take notes. Um, you know, it can become even aware of a conversation and start to provide output from the input that you give in a conversation. We need to get used to also talking to our computers because that's really one of the key benefits that AI will bring, bring, bring in return is it will be able to answer you. And then there's this whole idea around the customization and personalization. You know, your machine will no longer just be the same as the other, you know, 10 million, 20 million users out there. It will learn from you. You will learn from it. The more you put in, the more it will give back to you. But it will also be intelligent to realize that the light changed in a room and change your screen settings. You know, so it will all become around the personal experience, no longer just being one of many. And last but definitely not least is around energy efficiency. Um, you know, a lot's been said over the last few years around, um, you know, electricity consumption, reducing energy costs, AI PCs, and this new set of processes is really going to bring down consumption. It will also use AI intelligence to manage electricity consumption uh, um, and, and reduce the, you know, extend the battery life, reduce consumption, provide an all round better uh, PC experience for the user. There's so much to it. It's very exciting. So why TD Cynics? What is our value proposition to our partners? Yeah, great question. And I think an easy one to answer is it's around portfolio, skills and expertise. If you think about it, you know, we've got an amazing portfolio to enable a true AI experience that starts with your computing. That starts also with the peripherals that you attach onto it, whether it be a camera, a speaker, um, a room enabled conference center. You know, that's how you bring AI to life through input and output. But then on top of that, we, we can overlay it with our skills around software applications. We're first to market with Copilot. We have the knowledge and expertise of the application that brings value to the conversation on the computing power and the device that helped you interact with AI on a day to day basis. So I think we should always think about it as a package. AI is not about just the hardware, just the software. Um, you know, it really is about putting that all together as a solution. And I believe TD Cynics with its portfolio and its application software hardware skills, we are the best in market to bring a full AI solution to our customers in the future. Thank you, Brandon. I totally agree. I've, I've learned a lot today. Um, this new technology is certainly very exciting for all of us. Still lots of learnings for all of us. And I guess that's why we've got our great Workday platform with lots of learning tools. And we're also going to be sharing some uh, material with the teams um, with some backgrounds and some terminology um, assessments. We plan to do one of these, I think, every month so we can keep you all updated with, with enhancements that are happening. So thank you for that. You're welcome, Debbie. And you know, um, as we go through this journey together, um, for those who don't believe that AI adds value, let me tell you, just today, whilst listening to this, this has been created on an AI platform. The um, speech and, and wording has been created on ChatGPT 4.0. We've used an AI tool to create the script. So it is there. It does help efficiency and it does digitalize our world and make us far more creative. So, you know, it's a thing that's here today, but an exciting future for all of us. Happy selling to everyone.